I am Yvonne Pran, and today is day six of our reading through Matthew, and we're in Matthew 12. And the major theme in this section has a lot to do with what's in our heart is going to eventually come out. The way the passage starts is Jesus is going through the, to, through some grain fields, and his disciples are hungry, and they decide that they're going to um, take some grain and eat it. And the Pharisees, they just jump all over and say, oh, they're not supposed to do that. And Jesus says, you know, you should have remembered that in the Bible, God says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And then as he goes on from there, he sees, he goes to their synagogue and he sees a man with a shriveled hand and he heals him. And oh, they're just so upset because you're not supposed to do work on the Sabbath. And <laughs> kind of a funny little thing on that. If you think about it, that really wasn't work for Jesus to do. I mean, you know, he's the creator and he's God and it was really simple for him to do. But that aside, Jesus again says, you know, it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath. And um, he he goes on and it says that he withdrew to a place to be by himself. And we see this happen a lot where Jesus just like many of us, after you do ministry or you're working with people, he's exhausted. And so he tries to get a little bit of time alone. But what happens? All these people follow him. But, and he heals them. And it's, it, uh, Matthew says, this was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Here's my servant whom I'm chosen, the one I love and whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him. He will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel or cry out. No one will hear his voice in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. You know, he's a good and a gentle and a kind Savior. And they won't leave him alone, though. They accuse him of doing these things by the power of Satan, by the power of Beelzebub. And he says, no, you know, you can't do that. Um, you know, he says, if I, do, if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, who are your people driving them out by? And he says, you know, that, that uh, any kingdom, again, itself cannot stand. And this is the setting of the unforgivable sin <clears throat> where they absolutely refuse to believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And if they don't believe that the Holy Spirit is doing these things, if they don't allow the Holy Spirit to change their lives so they can come to God, it is the unforgivable sin because they'll never come to God then. But it, it he goes on and he makes a statement that I really want to focus on where he says, for out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And in their hearts, there was evil and there was wrong and there was accusations. And so all of that came out of them. And what Jesus wants in us is for there to be good things in our heart, for that to come out. And we will get that by spending time in his word and spending time with him. I can always tell if I have a problem in my spiritual life, in my relationship with the Lord, because I get grumpy and say things I shouldn't say. But when Jesus is in control, when his word fills us up, then good things will come out. And the passage goes on, and he uses the example of Jonah, which is a great uh, sort of proof that that really was true. Jesus says, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so the Son of Man, referring to himself, will be three days and three nights in the tomb. And just by sort of side comments saying the story of Jonah is true. It really did happen. And then it ends with this rather interesting little passage where his mother and his brothers come and they want to take him home because they think he's absolutely lost his mind. And he just says, you know, the people say, oh, your mother and your brothers are outside and you should go talk to him and all that. And then Jesus ends with this really extraordinary statement where he says, whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. When we do God's will, we are in a family, a brother and sister relationship with him. And that's really extraordinary. And so I'd like to close really with the prayer for all of us that our lives would be such that good things come out of our hearts and that people will recognize that we are related to Jesus. <music>